So a hormone that I really love is uh, allopregnanolone. Now, I would not recommend this necessarily for everyone, but I personally love it. So allopregnanolone is a metabolite of progesterone. Um, we've talked about progesterone in the other section. I've talked about it in great detail on other videos. So what's the difference of allopregnanolone? So it, your body makes it out of progesterone. Progesterone is generally an anti-stress hormone, but it's not specifically sedating. It's more just calming. And as long as you don't really, really overdo it with progesterone, you should be just fine to still have energy, be mentally sharp, do everything you need to do. Now, with allopregnanolone, it, ha it is the strongest or one of the strongest endogenous GABA agonists. So break that down for me. I think I know what it means, but yeah, just if you can clarify endogenous <laughs> and agonist and just so, yeah, we have it. <laughs> okay, so endogenous means it's already naturally in your body, right? So Xanax and, you know, alcohol, these are strong GABA agonists, but they're not Valium, but they're not natural in your body. Allopregnanolone is something that's naturally already inside your body. GABA agonist. So GABA is the number one neurotransmitter that makes you feel calm and at peace. As I said, Valium, Xanax, those are like the classics. But even with alcohol, alcohol has other effects as well. But what does everyone say about alcohol? Have a drink, relax, chill out, you know, like lower your inhibitions, have fun. You know, it's like it, it lowers that super ego should part of your brain and you're much more open and suggestible and stuff like that as well. Yeah, I was going to say the kids would definitely have more chance of me saying yes if I'd already had a <laughs> glass of wine. <laughs> Just saying. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they would probably also have the same effect if you had a lot of allopregnanolone because uh, it has the same effect. So um, I love it because I have not had this verified by testing, but I feel like I'm someone who's naturally low in GABA. Uh, and I am someone who's naturally high in cortisol and adrenaline. I do know that for a fact. And so GABA kind of opposes the effect of those excitatory neurotransmitters and hormones. Uh, it's often referred to as an in inhibitory neurotransmitter, which is ironic because... You know, they say by increasing GABA, you lower your inhibitions. So you're inhibiting your inhibitions, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> when they say inhibitory, what they mean is it's like slowing it down. It's like the brake rather than the gas pedal. It's really as simple as that. So it's like putting the brake on the whole, you know, uh, um, excitation part of uh, the, the central nervous system. So it calms you down and it, is actually, you know, sedating. Uh, if you give someone enough allopregnanolone, which they do in a specific situation, uh, it is actually used as a, a pharmaceutical application. It's given to women with postpartum depression. Um, and what they do in that case, they charge you like tens of thousands of dollars. And over three days, they put you in an IV drip of it and they just load you up <laughs> they give you as, and they give you so much that you've got to be monitored 24 hours a day because your heart might get too slow and you might you know, like fall over but that's because they're giving you loads of allopregnanolone uh an amount that's so excessive that it could just you know slow you down too much and that is possible if you had a ridiculous amount of allopregnanolone like they given that medical context but what about if you just had a little bit now is this strictly necessary? In many cases, I would say no. Just progesterone is plenty. But if you're really one of those people who really struggles to calm down, who really runs very stimulated, who has a kind of head that very much struggles to stop thinking, yes. So GABA is the, the biggest way to tell if you who have enough GABA is how easy is it for you to calm your mind? Meditation, right? And so... If you, that's a real struggle for you, that means that's a very strong indicator you don't have enough GABA. Just increasing the progesterone, which I've also recommended, may be enough for that. I personally like, though, to do progesterone during the day, and then I have allopregnanolone when I'm ready to go to sleep. Could I have it earlier in the day, say, if I was upset about something? Yeah, I don't get upset about very many things, it seems, anymore, unless they're you know actually real problems, which, of course, still happen uh, with the progesterone. So yes, you know, you technically could use it to calm yourself at any point. But for me, what I like it for is to 
just get my brain to shut off, fall asleep easily, and then sleep more deeply without, uh, you know, my mind being, being able to wake me up. And so let's say for somebody that's there out there in the world and they're like, okay, yeah, uh, that ticks my, 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 it's hard for my brain to shut off. I, I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep because my, my brain is going is so then would this be for them? You know, like who, who is this for? Uh, yeah, if I, I would go with the progesterone first these days because your body can make its own allopregnanolone out of progesterone. So, but if the progesterone is not enough to calm you down, even at the high doses that we've talked about when we have talked about progesterone, then it could be like an icing on the cake. It could be, okay, you're already calm, but now you're actually sedated. You know, now you're actually sleepy. Or... Maybe you're very upset and progesterone isn't enough to calm you down. As I said, that might be another time when you would go with allopregnanolone to guarantee the calm down. Uh, to me, I, I like having it there as well as a, um, you know, like a fallback, a last resort if I ever go into a, or someone around me, if it goes into a state of real panic or you know, like where there may be a danger to the others or themselves because they're that panicking, you know, maybe making rash decisions or whatever, like something that will just work to calm you down. Now, does it work at the amount that I normally, rec you know, recommend and use like one drop, one milligram? It may not take you from a, you know, a hyper state to sedated, but if you take enough of it, <laughs> it will sedate you. So, um, yeah, that's uh, uh, it's. I think it's a good thing if you can, if you can afford it and find it to have around, even if you don't need it. Just because, in my opinion, it's better than things like Xanax or Valium because it's natural. It's already something that's contained within your body. It's not habit forming. It's not addictive. Unlike those substances, it's obviously not habit forming addictive because, as I said. The only, pharmac the only medical use for it is pumping people absolutely full of it for three days and then sending them off and not giving them any more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so obviously it's not habit forming because you know when would you ever do that? When would you pump someone full of a maximum dose of a habit forming drugs for three days and then send them off? I mean, no, you would never do that. So it's obviously not habit forming. Um, and so for that reason, I, I, I like the idea of at least having it around. And what would be, I mean, you, you mentioned a drop. What is the best form of allopregnolone? So the only form that I've seen is uh, like a drop, which uh, in oil, which can either be used on the tongue or on the skin. I've experimented with both. And I must say, I have found it to be more effective on the tongue. But that's me. I think some people might feel differently. Um if so, like I talked about when I talked about progesterone, it may back up uh, Dr. Michael Platt's point, which is that, you know, your body more easily metabolizes progesterone into allopregnanolone when you use it orally. Maybe for whatever reason, when you, even if you use allopregnanolone orally, it's more effective than using it transdermally. So that's my personal experience, but you know, you could certainly try both. And so how would somebody use it? I mean, you talked about whether, you know, they're going to use it in their mouth or on their skin, but also if you could say, you know, is this something that they should do every day or is it only in, in situ of, uh, you know, when they're feeling this emptiness? Yeah, I would say if you're feeling it. I mean, if every day you struggle to get to sleep because your brain is racing, then maybe use it every day. But you know, if, if that only happens to you occasionally, maybe only use it occasionally. I would not use it like, you know, the, the B vitamins, like just, just because it's always a good idea. I would not use it in that way. I would use it as a if needed basis only because of course, is it possible to be too sedated? Of course it is, you know? So you definitely don't want to overdo it and you don't want to use it if you don't need it. Are there any safety concerns beyond just feeling really sedated? Not that I'm aware of beyond feeling really sedated, but we don't want to minimize the potential dangers of being over sedated. You know, um, I have not seen any case of it happening to anyone. Be and I think because it's something that your body produces itself, it's less likely to be dangerous than kind of uh, artificial sed sedatives like a Valium or a Xanax. But nonetheless, I would not play around with having an excessive amount of it. Um, I would be very cautious with it just in case, even though I've not seen any evidence that I need to be cautious because it does have that sedating effect. And I, 
and because of, as I said, the only use of it is to give the massive doses, and then people do have to be monitored. It's, I mean, uh, excessively sedated is dangerous, right? You can fall and you can crack your skull. Uh, possibly your heart rate will go so low that, you know, usually that's not a danger because your adrenals kick in and it will raise your heart rate again. But in certain situations, that can be an issue. Don't operate heavy machinery while, you know, under the influence. It's all that kind of stuff. That's all I'm aware of. So what I'm learning here is the difference between um, progesterone and allopregnanolone is the progesterone is the anti-stress hormone with calm with a calming effect, but you can still get a lot done. But whereas allop is more calming, but more sedating in that avenue. So they're, they're two very distinct things, even though um, allopregnanolone is made from progesterone, but they they, um, they have their differences. They definitely have their differences, yeah. Um, I would say progesterone first, aloe, pregnenolone, only if you really desire and require sedation. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Rejuvenate podcast. If you want to watch the full episode that that came from, just click on the link above. Or if you just want to watch our latest video, then click the link below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thank you.